So I don't know how many of you are readers of Chronicles, First or Second Chronicles. I am not one. I have not really read it much until the last two days. I have no idea why I landed here. I wasn't even really coming to Chronicles because I think most of us skip over it, you know. Um, but there's some amazing stuff up here that's just like, to me, hidden or buried, and I finally found it. Praise Yah. I think I was going to uh, Second Kings or whatever. And I was trying to find a verse that Abby read during her parasha, and I couldn't find it. Has that ever happened to you? Like, you hear the verse, you actually read it with your family or by yourself, and then you go back like two days later and it's gone? <laughs> it's crazy. Um, so I just kept going, and then, of course, First Chronicles is there, and I found this song that David did. Uh, it's kind of like a song. It probably is. It's probably related to one, but I saw this song. I put it to music with Abby yesterday. That was great, but I keep reading in Chronicles today. You know, and, uh, you know, happy Mother's Day if you're a mom. And um, anyway, this is where David, he is having the priest do the, the stuff on almost like it seems like a Sabbath service, but he's having to do the stuff in the temple that they do and following the law of Moses. Right. And he's restoring that. And then so Yah makes a covenant promise to David. Even though he's like, hey, you're not going to build me a temple. Because David's like, oh, I want to build you a house. And he's like, I don't need a house. Right? But you're not going to be the one. And that's, of course, Solomon. Right? So that comes later on, I think, in, in Second Chronicles and stuff. But anyway, um, he still gives him a promise through Nathan the prophet. Right? So it's like he tells Nathan, now go and say to my servant David, this is what the Yah... Yahuwah, the Lord of Heaven's armies, has declared, I took you from tending sheep in the pasture and selected you to be the leader of my people, Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have destroyed all your enemies before your eyes. Now I will make your name as famous as anyone <clears throat> who has ever lived on the earth, and I'll provide a homeland for my people, Israel, planting them in a secure place where they will never be disturbed. Evil nations won't oppress them, and as they've done in the past, um, starting from the time I appointed judges, to rule my people Israel, and I will defeat all your enemies. All right, and he keeps going. Furthermore, I declare uh, that Yah will build a house for you, a dynasty of kings. For when you die and join your ancestors, I'll raise up one of your descendants, one of your sons, and I will make his kingdom strong. Now, to me, that sounds like Solomon, okay? If you're just reading it. But then listen to this. He is. This is verse 12 in, in chapter 17. Of first chronicles he is the one who will build a house a temple for me and i will secure his throne forever so now i think it's like flown into yeshua i will be his father he'll be my son i will never take my favor from him as i took it from the one who ruled before you i will confirm his king over my house and my kingdom for all time and his throne will be secure forever. So, <clears throat> and like it moves from Solomon, I think, to Yeshua. I see that part there. And then even though David does a song in 16, you should check it out. It's kind of like the Song of Moses, more abbreviated, not as much detail with, you know, leaving Egypt and stuff like that as the Song of Moses, but it's literally the Song of David. He gives it to Asaph or whatever is a song. That's chapter 16, verses 8 through 30 something. All right. <laughs> but now David says a prayer of thanks. Okay, and this is a beautiful prayer. So let's pray it. Let's just pray this prayer that David gave. And this is verse 16, and it goes all the way to 27. It says, Who am I, O Yah, and what is my family that you have brought me this far? And I was just having the same exact moment with Yah. <laughs> you know, remembering uh, the disobedience and his mercy and faith and grace chastisement, correction of his son, and pulling you back, right? Um, and getting out of the wilderness finally. So I just had the same exact thought that David has here. So we could all pray this prayer. This, we're praying this prayer as a mission for God. Hold on. All right. Who am I, O Yah? And what is my family that you have brought me this far? And now, Yah, in addition to everything else, you speak of giving your servant a lasting dynasty? You speak as though I were someone very great, O Yah. What more can I say to you about the way you have honored me? You know what your servant is really like, right? Like, yeah, you know what I'm really like. You know what I've done. For the sake of your servant, oh yeah, and according to your will, you have done all these great things and have made them known. Oh yeah, there is none like you. 
We have never even heard of another God like you. What other nation on earth is like your people Israel? <clears throat> what other nation, O oh God, have you redeemed from slavery to be your own people? You made a great name for yourself. When you redeemed your people from Egypt, you performed awesome miracles and drove the nations, drove out the nations that stood in their way. You chose Israel to be your very own people forever, and you, O oh Yah, became their Elohim. And now, O oh Yah, I am your servant. Do as you have promised concerning me and my family. You know, Yah, I pray that you do as you have promised concerning living Messiah. You know, and my family, <clears throat> our families, may it be a promise that will last forever. And may your name be established and honored forever so that everyone will say, Yah, the Lord of heaven armies, the God of Israel, is Israel's God. And may the house of your servant David continue before you forever. And kind of, you know, Mark, Mark was talking about this yesterday, this like priesthood of Mechizedek, right? This leads into it. Oh, my, oh yeah, I have been told, I have been bold enough to pray to you because you have revealed to your servant that you will build a house for him, a dynasty of kings, for you are Yahuwah. And you have promised these good things to your servant, and now it has pleased you to bless the house of your servant so that it will continue forever before you, for when you grant the blessing of the Lord, it's an eternal blessing, right? He just does not give up on his promises. He does not ever become unfaithful because he can't. Yahuwah cannot ever be unfaithful because it goes against who he is. So he is ever faithful. We, we will be unfaithful. But he will be faithful on our behalf in spite of us because he can't be unfaithful. It's impossible. Say love.